This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hey, welcome to 12 Tone. This week's guest video comes from Ngasi, who runs the YouTube channel Chin. He's getting his masters on a new style of South African dance music that's become a global phenomenon, and he's here to tell us all about it. Take it away, Ngasi. Yes, hello. Thank you for having me, Corey. Princess Shuri from the Marvel Cinematic Universe film Black Panther can be simply described as a genius, a master engineer, scientist, and intellect. This prodigy is known for leading the Wakandan design group in creating their modern technologies, including weaponry, defenses, transportation, and communication. But what if I told you that her taste in music might also be maverick? Today we're going to be going into the Afrofuturistic sounds of Wakanda, a genre we call um. Bum is a South African electronic dance music genre birthed in the hoods and townships of the East Coast city of Durban in the KwaZulu Natal province in the dawn of the 2010s. From its early days of pumping in minibus taxis in and around cities to attract customers to choose their rides over the competition, and distribution via file sharing sites and apps like the now discontinued BBM and the current messaging giant WhatsApp, Bum has seen humongous traction and has gained prominence in places all over the world. This cybernetic genre is often described as dark, minimalist, and menacing, a direct or representation of the people who first created it, who historically and currently live in poverty. Despite the promises brought with the wake of democracy in the country in 1994 when Nelson Mandela was elected president, Bum has four main elements. There's an optional fifth, but we'll get to that a little later. For now, the four are a low drone, vintage instrumentation, futuristic synthesizers, and vocal ad libs and utterances. What's hey. Now I know what you're thinking. This all sounds fascinating, but what's it got to do with Shuri? Hold on. Let's break it down a little bit. Let's start with the drum pattern. In the scene where we get our first look into Shuri's lab, we are greeted with the intro of a song by the self-proclaimed gum queen, Babes Wodumo. That song being Wololo. Bum is generally distinguished by its lack of the four on the floor feeling. This drum pattern offers people an entry level experience to Bum by keeping it, but adding syncopation to a whole set of new drums that play underneath. After about a minute and 30 seconds, Wololo fades out and allows a whole new other song to come in. That song being called Bisi by Biza. I get it now. So it's just nifty drum loops. That's what Shuri's up into. It makes sense. It's completely amazing. Mm -mm, we are not done. Although super catchy, this is only but a little bit of what makes Gum the heavy hitter that it is. Let's actually do our own version. We're going to use a third drum pattern that is basically in recent years become the ubiquitous sound of Gum. So much so that award-winning musician Shoma Josie decided to make herself a song aptly titled Wakanda Forever. Mm-hmm. Now that we laid the drums in, let's lay in the things that the drums syncopate with, the synthesizers. I boo, yes. I boo, yes. I'm sorry, this time to get infectious for me. The ad-libs are just coming out of me. Which is the next thing I'm adding? Ad-libs. I boo, yes. Okay, okay, okay. This time is sound really infectious, but come on, it's literally like turning cheap instruments a gritty synthesizer and vocal ad-libs that sound like a radio edit to a trap song. It kind of feels a little on the all over the place spectrum. Like, I feel like there's still something missing. And you are right, if you are thinking these exact things, there is still something missing. The drone. Now, before we play this thing, I really want to answer the question of what does this have to do with Shuri and Wakanda as a whole, for that matter? This music represents who she is. See, the very language that she speaks, Wakanda, is based off the Isthosa language of South Africa, part of the very first listeners and producers of the music. Much like the producers, listeners, and followers of this greater culture, Shuri is young, and although greatly capable of doing many amazing things, people tend to treat her like she's nothing but young. Like she doesn't have anything else to offer. Like she still needs to grow in order for her to understand something. Even though indeed she is young, she can offer quite a bit. I mean, 
Can I get me that suit? Her amazing capabilities are overshadowed by the fact that she is not as old as the people that she interacts with. Like she doesn't know the history of where she's come from or has nothing much to offer with the future. Forever seen as the future of the nation, but never truly taken seriously as someone who can make something happen now. When you listen to the inner workings of the music, the broken drum beat, the broken trust that the youth have in the things that have come before them. The very sound of those drums feel like they're old because if you can think of what it is that the people that came before them can offer them and can hand down to them, there isn't much. It sounds like those things have seen better days. It sounds and feels like there isn't much because mandate from then is the mandate now, survive. But in this survival, in this deep pit of having next to nothing, the youth looks forward. They are forever seen as the future, the synthesizers, the sign of changing times happening now. This Afrofuturistic idea of taking what is old and making it new and adding what is new so that we can live in the now is rampant in punk music. And this is something that I really want to believe that Shuri is cognizant of. See, the very utterances in the music are from a deep agitation, an ongoing frustration, but an optimistic contemplation. The deep drone underneath, things look like they're gonna be the same forever, like they're gonna go on forever, but the combination of everything is a sign that they don't have to stay that way. See, Shuri's mindful that there are people out there that need a change. She's mindful that people have a message to say. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not be alarmed by the fact that I'm in completely different clothing at a totally different time of the day. My battery died, let's just roll with it. Anyway, as a thank you to Corey, I've decided to turn the song that we've been working on this entire video long into a thank you by adding the fifth element I said I would mention later because later is now. That element is lyrics. Generally, people can either leave out or put in lyrics to their discretion in the song. More often than not, they have added them, and I thought, why not? So, ladies and gentlemen, playing us out is the 12 tone gom. Okay, just it's full disclosure, I don't know why I named it that because it's gom is not a waltz, you don't name gom songs like this. But in any case, my name is Ben Gassi. This has been 12 tone. Ladies and gentlemen, Wakanda forever. 12 tone forever. So a lot of things forever, but play the track! Corby, thank you. Toto, thank you. Corby, thank you. Toto, thank you. Corby, thank you. Toto, thank you. Corby, thank you. Thanks, Ngasi. If you want to hear this music in action, he did a um remix of Jingle Bells for Christmas, which I'll link in the description. The channel's more vlog-style content right now, just so you know, but he's looking to cover more South African music stuff in the future, and I'm really excited to see where that goes. But before you go, this whole guest video series wouldn't have been possible without the support of our sponsors, so I'd like to thank Skillshare for helping out. Skillshare has been supporting 12 Tone for a long time, but in case you haven't heard of them, they're an online learning platform with over 25,000 classes in songwriting, music production, and all sorts of other skills. One one course I'd really recommend is called Audio Mixing on the Go by an audio engineer and DJ named King Arthur, who walks you through his approach to creating professional sounding mixes without needing an expensive studio. He goes through all the different elements he looks for in a good mix, as well as some great tips on how to create those elements when you're on the go. If that sounds interesting, or you want to check out any of Skillshare's other courses, you can click the link in the description to get two months of premium membership absolutely free, and if you want to stick around after that, premium plans are super affordable at less than 10 bucks a month. There's a lot to learn on Skillshare share, so why not give them a shot? And hey, thanks for watching, thanks to our Patreon patrons for making these videos possible, and extra special thanks to this video's featured patron, Duck. If you want to help out and get some sweet perks like sneak peeks of upcoming episodes, there's a link to our Patreon on screen now. You can also join our mailing list to find out about new episodes, like, share, comment, subscribe, and above all, keep on rocking.